Hi everyone. Now, in this part, we are going to learn about anaerobic respiration. So, it's a type of respiration. Okay. Then, how can we define an anaerobic respiration? Means the respiration in which an inorganic molecule such as nitrate, sulfate, or carbonate are going to serve as the terminal electron acceptor is known as anaerobic respiration. That means here this kind of the respiration does not require the oxygen whereas in aerobic respiration they require the oxygen because their oxygen is the terminal electron acceptor but here in the anaerobic respiration the terminal electron acceptors are other than the oxygen that means they can be of any inorganic molecule such as nitrate sulfate carbonate etc so this anaerobic respiration is also an energy yielding process in which the terminal transport chain acceptor or simply electron transport chain acceptor is an oxidized inorganic molecule other than the oxygen is known as anaerobic respiration and i told you what are the major electron acceptors here or nitrate sulfate that the sulfate ion or nitrate ion and the carbonate ion and here before going into the concept of this uh, nitrate respiration and the sulfate respiration just have a glance about what is meant by assimilative metabolism and what is meant by dissimilative metabolism assimilative assemble assembly okay so that means gathering so something is being gathering that means the fixation of the nitrogen from the atmosphere can be simply termed as assimilative metabolism whereas the dissimilative means conversion of this nitrate compound into the gaseous nitration disassemble that means you can disperse you can separate so that is going to be simply called as dissimilative metabolism so let's have a look on this assimilative metabolism when an inorganic molecule such as nitrate sulfate or carbonate is reduced for use as a nutrient source then it is called assimilator and the reduction process is called as assimilative metabolism. Then what is a dissimilative? When an inorganic compound such as nitrate, sulfate, carbonate are used as electron acceptors for energy metabolism. Then that in respiration and that process is going to be called as dissimilated and the reduction process is called as dissimilative metabolism so obviously we are going to discuss now about the dissimilative metabolism because we are concerned about the respiration now that is anaerobic respiration then depending upon this anaerobic respiration the microorganisms especially bacteria are being classified into three types and we find this anaerobic respiration majorly in the prokaryotes than the eukaryotes so what are the three types of anaerobes that we find or obligate anaerobes facultative anaerobes and aerotolerance so let's see what is an obligate anaerobe so microorganisms which are unable to grow in presence of oxygen that's why this has grown at the bottom where there is no supply of oxygen so such type of the organisms are going to be called as obligate anaerobes. that means in the presence of oxygen literally they will die they cannot survive those are being called as obligate anaerobes then what are facultative anaerobes these uh, whatever the facultative anaerobes that they may carry this aerobic respiration if oxygen is present but switch over to an alternate electron transport carrier if the anaerobic conditions are prevalent that means they can grow in the absence of the oxygen or in the presence of oxygen but they will grow well in the presence of oxygen so those are called as facultative so both the conditions are adjustable by these anaerobes and the third type are aerotolerant anaerobes so some bacteria have the ability to tolerate oxygen and grow in its presence but do not use oxygen remember they can grow in the presence of oxygen that to very little quantity or little amount not in more uh, amount 
they can grow in the little amount of oxygen but do not use the oxygen example is the streptococcus pyogenes whereas faculty general example is the e coli and the obligate means methanogens that means for the growth of these methanogens they are required complete anaerobic condition so this is how depending upon the anaerobic uh, respiration the anaerobes are of three types what are they obligate anaerobes facultative anaerobes and aerobe tolerance then moving to the next nitrate respiration or nitrate reduction so under the anaerobic respiration we are going to discuss two types of respirations one is nitrate respiration another one is the sulfate so let's begin with the nitrate respiration and as we know nitrate is one of the most common type of uh, inorganic electron acceptor used in anaerobic respiration and is reduced to our nitride form and nitrous form nitric acid form uh, that is nitrous oxide form and then to the dinitrogen because of these products of nitrate respiration all these are all gaseous form only either it is going to be of a uh, nitrite form or nitric acid form or nitrous or oxide form whatever it may be or nitrogen dinitrogen all are gaseous form only so when they are being converted in, from the nitrate to these compounds they can easily uh, released into the atmosphere and because of this process this is also called as denitrification remember the nitrate respiration or nitrate reduction is also called as denitrification and the process uh, is going to be of uh, because of uh, nitrogen produced during it is much less readily available to the organisms as a source of nitrogen and denitrification uh, the, uh, what we call it as denitrification is mainly beneficial for sewage treatment because it converts the amount of available nitrogen in the form of nitrate to Nit dinitrogen thus effectively decreasing the amount of available nitrogen in the sewage treatment effluent and that can stimulate the algal growth so the process of this denitrification is determined for even the agriculture purpose also because uh, nitrogen produced during it is much less readily available to the organism as a source of nitrogen okay so here are the total various steps of a process of denitrification of nitrate so here you can see it's a nitrate then converting into the nitrite form in the presence of a nitrate reductase and this nitrite is going to be converted into nitric oxide form which is of NO and now this nitric oxide in the presence of reductase that is nitric oxide reductase enzyme it is going to be giving rise to nitrous oxide and then it is going to get into the form of dinitrogen which is a gaseous form that means from the nitric oxide form that is NO to dinitrogen that is N2 these are all going to be released directly into the atmosphere and the biochemical mechanism of nitrate respiration or the dissimilative metabolism of nitrate reduction has well been studied in some microorganisms like uh, Escherichia coli, Paracoccus denitrificans and pseudomonas ruji okay so these are the three best studied of having this nitrate respiration in those organisms in which e coli okay in e coli we can see only the uh, one step of uh, nitrate reduction that is the from the conversion of uh, nitrate to nitrite so here you can see out of uh, all these reactions it is going to have only one step because it is having only one enzyme that is nitrate reductase so you can see this picture so here is a plasma proteins and here is the enzyme so here it is going to reduce this nitrate into the form of nitrite NO2 minus but in paracoccus denitrificans and pseudomonas ruji where uh, true denitrification occurs that is from the nitrate to the dinitrogen form it occurs because of having all the necessary enzymes like nitrate reductase nitric oxide reductase and nitrous oxide reductase so look at this picture here you can have the clear picture of this thing so from here electrons are being transported and they are going to be 
taken up by the nitrate reductase and converting the nitrate into nitrite form that is NO2 minus and this NO2 minus is being converted into NO that is nitric oxide in the presence of an enzyme called as nitrite reductase and now this nitrite uh, reductase enzyme is going to give the nitric oxide which in the presence of nitric oxide reductase giving rise to nitrous oxide N2O nitrous oxide and this nitrous oxide is going to be converted into nitrogen that is dinitrogen in the presence of an enzyme called as nitrous reductase. So this is how because of the presence of all the enzymes necessary of conversion of nitrate to nitrite these uh, are going to have the uh, total enzymes okay and the total mechanism of denitrification is occurring in both the pseudomonas rigi as well as the paracoccus denitrification but in the e coli we had only one step because of presence of only one enzyme okay so this is all about the nitrate respiration then moving to the sulfate respiration so the sulfate respiration is also called as sulfate reduction yes it is also called as sulfate reduction and sulfate is the most oxidized form of sulfur. It is the most oxidized form of sulfur and it is a less favored electron acceptor than either the oxygen or nitro nitrate. That means if the bacteria is going to have the options of having nitrate and the sulfate, the bacteria will opt the nitrate first. And if it is not there, then only it will opt the sulfate. Okay. And this sulfate ion is the most, as I told you, is one of the major anion in the seawater. And it is going to be used mainly by sulfate reducing bacteria in their dissimilative metabolism. In the dissimilative metabolism, that is sulfate respiration or sulfate reduction. The end product of this sulfate respiration is H2S, sulfide gas, whereas in the end product of nit nitrate respiration is dinitrogen, okay. And an important natural product that participates in many biogeochemical process, which is the H2S. And the examples, that means uh, many, how, a large variety of sulfate reducing bacteria are known, such as uh, desulfovibrio, desulfomonas, then desulfotomaculum and desulfolobus which utilize either the lactate, pyruvate, ethanol or certain fatty acids as uh, electron donors reducing the sulfate to HDS. Out of all these things, the desulfovibrio is the best studied genus and commonly occurs uh, in aquatic habits or some sort of uh, waterlogged soils containing abundant organic matter or material okay and sufficient levels of sulfate and coming to the growth and reduction of sulfate uh, of uh, what we call as a desulfate or maculum in certain canned food leads to a type of spoilage called a sulfide stinker stinker sulfide stinker which we are going to read them in the canned foods in the food microbiology subject okay and coming to the biochemical mechanism of this sulfate respiration or sulfate reduction so this is how what is happening in this biochemical mechanism the dissimilative sulfate reduction to h2s so here is our sulfate and here is the h2s it's an h electron reduction process and the process is going to continue or proceed through a number of intermediate products. So what are those things? Let's see. So here the sulfate is stable and requires an activation before the reduction. So that means it requires some energy to get activated. The activation of the sulfate takes place by means of obviously ATP and the enzyme that is involved in the activation of the sulfate is ATP sulfurylase. What is it? ATP sulfurylase and which is going to catalyze a reaction and giving rise to a compound called as APS. What is meant by APS? Adenosine 5 prime phosphosulfate. Adenosine 5 prime phosphosulfate. Now the sulfate moiety of APS is reduced directly to 
sulfide that is SO3 minus 2. Reduce it to sulfide molecule by uh, the enzyme called as APS reductase. What is meant by APS? That is adenosine phosphosulfate reductase is going to convert this APS into sulfide. Now this sulfide by the reduction of uh, process by, with the help of an enzyme called as a sulfate uh, or sulfide reductase giving rise to H2S which is a final gas. Finally reduce it to the H2S with the involvement of an enzyme called as sulfide reductase. Now the electron transport chain of uh, an energy conservation in sulfide reducing bacteria you can see this uh, whole thing in this form okay so if you are seeing here electron transport reaction generate a proton motive force here that derives ATP synthesizes by the enzyme called as ATPase and cytochrome C3 so here the cytochrome C3 a periplasmic low potential cytochrome accepts electrons uh, from the hydrogenase enzyme and transfers these electrons to the membrane bound complex called as HMC and that carries them across the plasma membrane thus making them available to the APS okay and this APS reduction or reductase enzyme requires uh, two electron molecules to convert into the sulfate and other six electrons are going to be used in the conversion of this uh, sulfide to H2S. And this is going to be uh, the sulfide reductase or cytoplasmic enzyme. So just I have forgotten to tell you here, there are uh, involvement of eight electrons all together in this process, out of which two are involved in the conversion of adenosine pi prime phosphosulfate to sulfide. And the rest of the six electrons are going to be utilized in the conversion of sulfide to H2S, okay. So this is all the overall mechanism of uh, the sulfide or sulfate respiration or sulfate reduction. Then you can see uh, this is the overall mechanism that I have told you here the sulfate is going to be converted into APS and this APS is giving rise to sulfide and the sulfide is getting converted into the H2S. Okay, so that's all about the sulfate redu reduction or sulfate respiration. So here you can have a glance of the most common types of anaerobic respiration that are occurring. And these are the microorganisms having this type of the respiration. So let's see the first one that we have discussed in detail is nitrate respiration, which is also called as denitrification. And what's the process occurring? The nitrate is going to be converted into the form of dinitrogen. And the examples of this is E. coli, Paracoccus denitrificans and Pseudomonas trudgei. And then sulfate respiration or sulfate reduction where the sulfate is going to be converted into H2S and the examples are going to be desulfovibrio, desulfuricans and desulfobacter. And even uh, carbonate is also there but we didn't discuss okay iron respiration is there fumarate respiration is there and here in the carbonate the carbon dioxide is going to be converted into the acidic acid form or it may be of a methane form where the best examples are in the methane methanobacter and in the acetic acid conversion is going to be the acidobacterium then in the sulfur respiration we already discussed okay obligate anaerobes like uh, desulfurococcus pyrodic and facultative aerobes also involved. Then coming to the iron respiration which is also anaerobic respiration where the ferric is going to be converted into ferrous. Examples are uh, geospirillum, geobacter and geovibrio, shevanella. And then fumarate respiration where the fumarate is being converted into succinate. Okay, And the examples of these, the microorganisms in which this fumarate respiration is occurring is desulfovibrio gigas and some Clostridia and even some E. coli. So this is the overall different types of anaerobic respiration that are occurring in different types of microorganisms. In this part especially we had gone through nitrate respiration and sulfate respiration in detail. Okay, thank you.